Today we're going to look at how to prove that the differential with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. We're going to start off by looking at the definition of e and that is that e is equal to the limit as n tends towards infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n. Now we're going to rearrange this ever so slightly by letting y equal 1 over n. Now think about what happens with this as n tends towards infinity. y is going to be tending towards 1 over infinity, so it's going to be tending towards 0. So what we can do now, replacing n tending towards infinity with y tending towards 0, and replacing the 1 over n and the n, we get that e is equal to the limit as y tends towards 0 of 1 plus y to the power of 1 over y. Now we're going to use this later, so we're going to keep it here. We're now going to differentiate e to the x by first principles. So differential is going to equal the limit as h tends towards 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x all over h. So that's just differentiating by first principles. Now, if we notice that first e, we've got powers adding together. By the rules of indices, e to the x plus h is equal to e to the x times by e to the h. So if we replace that, we're now going to have e to the x on both of those terms at the top. So we can factorize that out. And that's going to be equal to the limit as h tends towards 0 of e to the x times by e to the h minus 1 all over h. Now that e to the x there, it's not dependent upon h, so we can take that outside of the limit as such. So we have e to the x times by the limit e to the h minus 1 all over h. Our problem now is trying to find this limit because both top and bottom of that fraction are tending towards 0. So we need to do a bit of rearranging to try and get this into a form where we can find the limit. So we're going to let y equal e to the h minus 1 the top of the fraction. Rearranging this, we get that e to the h equals 1 plus y. So h is equal to ln of 1 plus y. We can also see that as h tends towards 0, in our first equation there, we get that y tends towards e to the 0 minus 1, which is going to end up being 0 because e to the 0 is 1. So as well as substituting our values in for h, we can also change our limit from h tending towards 0 to y tending towards 0. So we've now got e to the power of x times by the limit as y tends towards 0 of y over ln 1 plus y. Dividing top and bottom of that fraction by y, we're going to end up with 1 on the top and we're going to end up with that 1 over y multiplying on the bottom. By the laws of logarithms, if we've got something multiplying a log, as we've got on the bottom of this fraction, we can bring that multiple inside the log as a power. So that bottom part now becomes ln of 1 plus y to the power of 1 over y. Now the only place within that fraction where y appears is on the bottom in the denominator now. So we can move our limit inside the log natural. It's not going to change anything. It's still going to be the same value. So we now end up with e to the power of x. That's times by 1 over ln of the limit as y tends towards 0 of 1 plus y to the 1 over y. But this is what we had at the beginning. We've shown that the part inside the log natural there is equal to e. So we're going to end up with e to the x times by 1 over ln e. But ln and e are just opposites of each other. So ln e is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. So we end up with e to the x. So there we go. We've proven that d e to the x dx is equal to e to the x. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.